Okay, today we're going to do the post-lab discussion for a cart rolling down a ramp. In class, what we did was we rolled a cart down the ramp and using a motion detector, we did three investigations. We looked at the relationships between position versus time, velocity versus time, and velocity versus position for this cart. And our goal today is to come up with three equations that we're going to use throughout the unit for an object that's accelerating. Now, in class, we defined the uh, acceleration of an object to be the slope of a velocity versus time graph. And it turns out that the first equation is uh, relatively easy to get. Um, it comes from the fact that uh, the velocity versus time graph is linear. So what we have here, the y-intercept, is the initial velocity. And our slope is the acceleration. And this occurs over some period of time. Okay, So using the y equals mx plus b, and fitting it to our uh, graph, we have the velocity which is on the y-axis, is equal to the acceleration times the thing on the horizontal axis, which is time, plus our y-intercept, which is the initial velocity. Okay, so that is our first equation. Easy enough. Now, uh, for this unit, at this point, we're going to define a few things. The first one uh, is the instantaneous velocity, okay? Uh, this is different than the average velocity because the difference is the average velocity is, uh, cons considers uh, the object's motion over the whole period of time. But for an instantaneous velocity, we're looking at the velocity at an instant, okay? So it's the velocity of an object at a certain time. Um, and again, in the last slide, we talked about acceleration already. It's a slope of a velocity versus time graph. Now, what this tells you is it's the rate of change of velocity over time. So in this unit, we're going to be talking about objects that are speeding up and slowing down. Um, one important thing to note is that uh, a big misconception that students have is that acceleration only occurs when an object speed is up. Not true. The way we're going to use this word in class is uh, if an object's velocity changes at all, whether it speeds up, slows down, or its direction changes, you have an accelerating object. Any change in velocity at all works. Okay, our second equation is going to take uh, a few steps. Uh, we're going to be looking at our velocity versus time graph again, and what we're going to do is we want to look at the area beneath the graph. And if you recall from last unit, the area beneath the graph tells us the displacement. Okay, so what we want is an expression that tells us the displacement. So this is going to give us a unique shape called a trapezoid. And what we're going to do is just cut this up into two shapes, much more friendly to us. This is the, uh, we've got a rectangle and we've got a triangle. So here, what we want to do is talk about the area of the rectangle first. And then we've got the area of the triangle, we'll call it A2. So we've got uh, the displacement is given to us by area 1 plus area 2. Um, area 1, easy enough to get because we've got the, the whole base here is just time and the height is v initial so we've got v initial times time 
and that takes care of area one. For area two, we have this expression. Uh, the area of a triangle, if you remember, is one half base times height. So what we have here is one half times the time, which is the base, times the height, where the height is given to us by this difference, V minus V initial. Okay? And that kind of makes sense because at the very top, we have the velocity at the end, at this point in time here. And I'm just interested in this height. So this height is given to us by the difference of the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Now what I'm going to do here is going to pause for a moment in our derivation. I'm going to take a look at this term here. And I'm going to look at our current definition of acceleration because acceleration is just given to us as a slope of a velocity versus time graph. So what this is, is the change in the y value versus the change in the x value. Or in other words, it's the change in velocity over the change in time. Uh, rearranging a little bit, I'm going to uh, see that our change in velocity is just v final minus v initial. And my change in time is just going to be t final minus t initial. And in this uh, case, what our t initial is is zero. So we do not have to worry about this term. And what I can do here is I can get a t expression for the change in velocity. The change in velocity is equal to a t after I multiply both sides by uh, t. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute v minus v initial in for the v minus v initial up here in red. And I'm going to get this expression here. The change in x is equal to um, v initial t plus one half t times a t. And I'm going to continue this on the next slide. Uh, we have delta x is equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared, combining like terms. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my displacement, which is x minus x initial is equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared. I'm going to add x initial to both sides to get our three term quadratic. And I'm going to rearrange the way that we like to see things in math with a quadratic up front. One half a t squared plus v initial t plus x initial. And there's our second equation. Um, and I'm showing you this graph here because it kind of makes sense with our position versus time graph. What this tells us is that the position versus time graph is going to be a quadratic. And what happens in this unit is that we see that our position versus time graphs are no longer linear. They start taking a quadratic shape. So in other words, they look like curves. Um, and depending on the type of uh, behavior the object will uh, have, uh, we see that uh, certain terms can go away. And I'll talk more about that um, in class. Okay, for our third equation, we're going to look at our velocity versus position graph. Uh, in class, we found that this was a sideways opening parabola. So in order to straighten this out, what we had to do was square the velocity axis. And this gave us something like this. And 
Um, the third equation just comes from looking at the y equals mx plus b for the velocity squared versus position graph, noting that the y-intercept is our v initial squared, and our y is velocity squared, and our slope from our post-lab discussion that we had last time was twice the acceleration. Okay, and we came up with that by comparing all of our data in a whiteboard discussion. So using y equals mx plus b for this graph, we get the y is equal to v squared is equal to 2a. And the horizontal axis is the position, but I'm going to call this delta x for our displacement. Sometimes the initial x is going to be 0, sometimes not. So it's worth it to call this delta x. And our y-intercept, like I said before, was v initial squared. And that's our third and final equation here. Gathering everything up, I have the three kinematic equations. Okay, uh, it's important that we get used to using these. I know it looks very busy, but um, after some practice, we will be good at applying all three of these to certain problems. I'll see you in class.